Picture this, a hacker just starting out strikes gold with his first bug, and it's not just any bug. It's a remote command execution, a critical vulnerability on a massive public program, Netflix. This hacker turned a PHP upload bypass into his first bounty by scoring a $5,000 reward. The best part of all this, this score came straight out of our monthly target initiative, where every month I drop my recon data for free via a Discord bot to help hackers like you level up. So if you want in, drop a comment with the word Discord in the comments and I'll get you that invite link. Now, stick around. I've got the man himself, Mateen, here with me. He's not just the hacker behind this Netflix win. He's also about to walk us through an epic challenge from a free hub we're hosting over at Hacking Hub. Check the pinned comments for the link to try it out on your own and you can follow along while we do this. So let's jump in and see how he breaks it all down. So yeah, uh... I was uh, working on some VDPs. You had a live stream for the Netflix. It was the first live stream on Discord. So I just joined the stream. You was doing the recon and it was a in interesting target. And also you did some recon, the data was there. So I just said, let's try uh, hack on Netflix. Maybe I, I find something. That was it. I started on uh, Netflix. And tell me about this bug. You, we'll look at the bug itself in a bit, but what was your process for reconnaissance? Well, how did you find this website that was vulnerable? What reconnaissance did you do? What was the step all the way until you found the website? And then we'll talk about the vulnerability later. I took the recon data from uh, your recon bot on Discord. I gave it to my HTTPX, checked all the subdomains. I started to checking uh, the ones with 200 code. Yeah, I was going through my list. I opened uh, this website. It had a file upload functionality, and I think it's an interesting thing to check. So I said, okay, let's try uh, some stuff on this. Maybe it's vulnerable, and uh, it was vulnerable. Okay, tell me a little bit more about HTTPX. When you you took all of the data from our Discord, so people that are watching, we put you know data on our Discord. It's free; everyone can grab it. You grab the data, so you grab all the domains and all the subdomains we provide, and then what did you do for HTTPX? What was the process? What are the things that you grab? Is it screenshots? Is it you know location? What all do you grab? So uh, first thing, uh, I use Ax Axiom to uh, distribute the list. So big shout out to Axiom, uh, Octavian, yeah. and Pryoc. Pry I think is how you say his name online. Massive kudos to them. It's a really good framework. Right. If you haven't checked it out, you should check it out. So yeah, it was a huge list. I checked like uh, the check technology flag so you get some technologies used on each website or each uh, domain i also use the redirect so i can check where is going this uh, website where is that redirecting uh, most of them are, are redirecting to netflix main domain or a login page so i wouldn't go for them and i just uh, remove them from my list and i just uh, look for 200 and I know people that are watching this, I know they're excited to see the bug. So why don't we just go into the lab and launch a CTF and show them how it looks. Here is the CTF, the new CTF based on the RC vulnerability. The first thing is that check uh, which t technology is used in the backend of uh, this website. We have to build a, our payload for uh, that specific technology. So there are multiple uh, ways to check that. I'm just going to use Vapalizer browser plugin. I just go here. Most of the times you get, for example, PHP, React, all technologies used uh, on this website. Here we, we just get uh, the web servers, uh, operating system, and this kind of stuff. In the in the so, real version of this bug, it showed you that it was mm -hmm. a specific language. Exactly, yeah. And it, that was PHP, I assume. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. a PHP web application. Yeah. So when we know it's a PHP web app, we build our payload for PHP. The next thing was checking the JavaScript endpoints. So there is a JavaScript endpoint scraper on the Discord uh, channel, your Discord channel. So go to my console and then enter this code snippet. I'm just gonna do it on HackerOne, for example, to see the output. Yeah, and just for people that are watching, the reason why we're doing this on HackerOne is the lab doesn't have any massive JavaScript around it. Yeah. So we're going to use HackerOne to show you what this looks like. Exactly. After inputting it, we get all of the endpoints on the website. So maybe we can find some interesting uh, endpoints, APIs to hack on. Yeah, the, the good thing about this snippet is it looks at everything that looks like an endpoint uh, that could be API, a file, anything that could be referenced in a JavaScript file. So sometimes it could also uncover maybe endpoints that are more um, requires more permission so maybe you have an admin or maybe it's like a SaaS product you have to be a manager or it's that you you know it's not released or something like that that you can't access directly through a ui so the, something like this is great to have because it shows you uh, those endpoints and you can hack on it for this uh, specific bug was the api endpoint hidden or was it something that you could directly access from the website 
Yeah, uh, one of the API endpoints was uh, here in this uh, output. And after finding that, I go through FF, use my word list, and find uh, other endpoints on the website. But the first API was here. Okay, so let's look at the bug. I smile about this bug is because I, I've, I've seen your report and I've seen the bug and we've talked about mm -hmm. it a couple of times. Let's, let's go through it. Let's go through it. I'll keep my comments for the end. Here we have a file upload functionality. I'm just going to give a email address and then I just select random image file and then uh, actually create uh, the batch. I get an error, uh, invalid file type, only image uh, GIF files are allowed. So let's uh, check the request and response in there. So here we can see that this file upload is sending the image data uh, in the content disposition. So this is a kind of thing that it's really interesting for me. And uh, when I see such a thing, I'm gonna test it for the file upload vulnerabilities, like RC or other types. I just send it to my uh, repeater. Now I upload a image file and it says uh, it's invalid. So uh, first we can change, for example, the content type and I'm gonna go with if to see if we can uh, bypass it. So when we look at the response, so we still have this error that it's not allowed to upload. There is a magic bytes, first few bytes of each file that indicates the format of it, and it's a unique value. And we can try to add this magic byte to our data so we can bypass the check in the backend. So I'm gonna add this to my uh, request. Give 89A, it's the magic byte for uh, GIF format. And then I, I'm gonna send it. This time I get uh, your badges ready, and here is the endpoint it's uh, uploaded to. We can check it here. So it's uploaded, and uh, our file is there. So in reality, the, even though you uploaded a JPEG and it's not a .gif, it's mm -hmm. bypassing it because because the application is looking for those magic bytes. As long as the first exactly. line has those, it doesn't matter. It uploads it. Sometimes also there are uh, some checks for this uh, ending. Uh, the extension. But yeah. in this case, yeah, yeah, in this case we don't have uh, the check. Now that uh, we we bypass that, we can uh, or we should go to uh, build our payload. So I'm just gonna delete this. Uh, data we don't need them i'm gonna change this to uh, for example shell that php so it's a php web, lab, web application so we have to upload a php file that runs in the back end or it could be a jsp file uh dot, or dot net, whatever yeah. yeah yeah the payload is actually really simple and straightforward it's just a one-liner system uh exactly runs uh system commands in the server and uh, print the output and then I'm gonna go uh, dollar sign underline uh, request. Since the backend is a PHP backend, you can upload a PHP file. Sometimes that may work. Sometimes it may not let you upload PHP. The next step should be something like trying .html, other malicious, malicious types of files. You can do PHP files sometimes if .php is blocked, but maybe PHP 5 could work. There are all these different extensions you can try. You just have to find out which one works. In this case, luckily, PHP works, I hope, and we're able to create a file that takes the CMD parameter with the file name, and you pass it a Linux command, and it gives you the output of it on the page. So let's just see if this works. So let's just send it. And yeah, your badge is ready. So we are going to go to check it. So I named it uh, shell. So I'm going to uh, enter shell here. So shell.php. Let's see if it's there. So uh, it shows us this magic byte we add, and uh, it's loading. Then I'm going to uh, add this query string. We can try it with who am I, and it prints the output. So uh, what do you want us to check? Yeah, I mean, it just shows that you have command injection. What I'm curious about yeah, is, I mean, that's not I've only seen this in like CTF platforms and learning platforms. I've never seen it in action. And it's mind blowing to see like this kind of vulnerability still exists, which is very cool because I just didn't expect that I would never check for it, to be honest. Now it's making me wonder if I should check for it more often. I also cite on a uh, LAMP platform and I just tried it and it worked. So. I mean, it's really crazy that this is such a uh, simple thing is out there and you can just hack on it. Yeah, it's worth it. How close is this lab to what you had found? 
it's the exact same thing. I know people are going to ask this. This is one of the major comments we get in our videos. How long did it take you from starting to hack Netflix all the way to finding this bug? How many hours roughly did you spend to make this money? And how much was the bounty, if you don't mind disclosing? So uh, I spent like a week and uh, each day like seven, eight hours. So first I uh, reported the bug. It was uh, informative. And then I just go through my list and after like a week, I found this one. So I was awarded uh, 5,000 US dollar by Netflix. Shout out to Netflix for uh, their great program, uh, really fast responses, great team. The day after that I uh, sent my first report, I was going through my list and I uh, opened a domain from my list and it was a uh, same vulnerability but uh, in a, another language so the website was in another language so i tested it again and it was also vulnerable i reported it and uh it was a duplicate it's incredible yeah so but uh they added a 500 bonus Respect. to it because of the second rc yeah and uh how long have you been doing bug bounties and you know how, what's your experience like, did you have any other bounties before this did you do any bug bounties before this what's your experience like no, uh, it was my first paid bounty, uh, first paid bug. And before that, I had one report uh, on a VDP and I was doing like bug bounty like five months, six months. And at that time, I was doing it full time. So yeah, after six months, I found this one, actually these two ones and yeah. There you have it. Mateen just walked us through an epic bug and gave us the inside scoop on an amazing RC that scored him his first 5,000 dollar bounty it's pretty wild right if you want more hands-on bugs like this let me know down in the comments i'm all ears and while you're at it smash that like button drop a comment and if you haven't already do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and become a homie. all right that's it i will see you all in next week's video peace